Hello, welcome to my review of the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is the 1978 version. Uh, yeah, I have seen the 50s version. This one, Donald Sutherland, Brooke Adams, uh, also Veronica Cartwright and Jeff Goldblum. First time I've seen it, to be honest. It's been on my radar for a while. I remember seeing the ending to it many years ago which is so annoying. Uh, I hate it when you see the ending to a film because the whole way through you, you kind of know where it's going, you know where it's leading. However, I did still have an awful lot of fun getting there, even though I knew where it was going. I knew what the final shot of the film was, I knew what the final scene was. I still had fun getting there and, and, and seeing this journey uh, that this main character played by Donald Sutherland goes on. So. For those that don't know, obviously this is this is a story based on a book by Jack Finney called The Body Snatchers, and it sees at the start of a film in what is pretty inventive special effects, I think, for, for its day, for, for 78, we see this substance, this, what looks like an organic substance, on a planet somewhere. It kind of just it just it floats off into space, travels through space, comes down to Earth, settles down on plant life, and, and that's it. That's how the film starts. It all happens within the first five minutes. From there on out, stuff starts going wrong. People start becoming not themselves. They're, they are being snatched. Their bodies are being doubled by these alien life forms. They grow out of these pods and, and they get rid of the person they've doubled. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a great film. It must be said. I think I prefer this one over the original, and the original was very good as well, starring Kevin McCarthy, who does make an appearance here. So at the end of uh, the original film, for the you know, spoiler warning for that film and this film, I guess at the end of that film. He, he's running basically he's, he's on the run the whole town that he was in has been uh, taken over by these aliens and he's on the run and in this film we get a little scene with him in he's he's saying the same thing he was at the end of that original film you know get get out of here you know run for your lives that they're, 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 they're after us and all this um, so that was a really nice scene to see and, and it could almost be a sequel of sorts it could almost be yeah like this guy has maybe been on the run for 20 years and and, and no one's believed him he's just come across as some insane deluded fool which is the way a lot of the people in this film come across at first because there's almost like this epidemic that breaks out of people saying that their partners have changed they're not the same person and it really feeds into this air of uh, kind of conspiracy thriller paranoia type of film now in the 50s version obviously they had communism at the forefront fear of communism at the forefront and that's what fed into the paranoia of that film uh, you know the, the the alien invasion kind of came symbolic of the invasion uh, or possible invasion of communism here we're, we're in the 70s the late 70s and back then we had this idea of the individual really coming to the fore people kind of finding themselves psychiatry was becoming a really big thing you know a lot of people were suddenly getting psychiatrists and trying to become introspective looking into themselves before they could look outward and, and, and look at society and this film uses that idea uh, but but places an alien spin on it so we get this this alien life form that is making everyone conform is doing away with emotion is doing away with individuality and it is that fear that loss of identity of that individual identity um, but at the same time if we if we are able to let go of that if we are stop if we can stop kind of looking at ourselves and trying to you know all be individual we would gain something uh, of, of a, more of a community kind of aspect, a more community feel, community vibe, uh, people looking out for each other rather than thinking purely about themselves. So that all feeds into this film. Um, but it does it brilliantly, it must be said. All the performances across the board, there's a lot of actors here that I really like. I, I love Veronica Cartwright. If, if you want someone to do crazy eyes and hysterical, she's pretty much your go-to actress. You know, you think about her performance in Alien, you think about her in Witches of Eastwick and a few other things. 
um, she, she's definitely the one to go to. And she's 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 great here for you know for those very reasons. Donald Sutherland is. I, you know, I said this in my review for Don't Look Now, he's an actor that I really do respect, admire, and, and I, I love his performances. Um, I love him in the Hunger Games movies. I just think he brings gravitas to whatever he's doing. And he, he's a very likeable presence on screen, you know, he's a very easygoing presence. So uh, he has great chemistry, I think, in this film with Brooke Adams, which is, is very necessary to get you to care for these characters. I love the performances. Jeff Goldblum, quite frankly, needs no introduction. He does here what he does everywhere, which is just that kind of crazy, off the wall, slightly, weird kind of guy with with great intelligence uh, but yeah I love him here as much as I ever ever do anywhere um what I really do like is the physical practical effects work here um you know, it's a few years before the thing came out and the work that is in this is just as good uh, I would say as anything in the thing one particular scene when Sutherland's character is is being snatched uh, this, this, this pod is kind of creating a version of him um, and he's asleep and Veronica Cartwright comes in she does her whole crazy stare thing her hyster hysteria and tries to wake him up and when he wakes up that, that whole scene, it's bloody, it's brutal, the, the physical effects, the practical effects in it are fantastic. They really go into some detail of how these pods develop into a life form, into a human replicant, so to speak. And then to top it off, we get Sutherland bashing the skull in, bashing the face in, really, of, the, of his replicant. Um, and it is, it's quite full on, it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. The, the film itself, I think has a really great atmosphere throughout, um, a sense of dread, that sense of paranoia. It does a really good job of, of building that paranoia just with little things, sound cues and little kind of physical cues that, that aren't just, they're not in your face, but you have to pay attention to what's going on. Like there's, there's a scream. So throughout the film, we get this, uh, you know, when these replicants are after, replicants, pods, call them pods, are after someone that they know isn't one of them, they highlight them by doing this scream, you know, which is this famous scene towards the end of the film as well. Um, and long before we see that, we hear it. There's a couple of times throughout this film where like Brooke Adams' character will be walking down the street and we'll hear that scream just in, just in the background. And you're like, what is that? You're not going to show us what that is. You're not going to cut to that, and they don't. And it's just, it just builds that sense of tension and dread. Like, what is going on here? Um, and then physical stuff as well. Like, you see people in the background, and some are walking normally. You know, they 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 look normal, and then you get others who are just really completely emotionless, and they're just doing something like staring at a tree as they're walking by, but in a really weird kind of emotionally stunted way so yeah all these cues that feed into it that build up the tension throughout the film before we get some full-on stuff and some really creepy full-on stuff as well like at one point uh, there's, there's this guy who's this homeless guy and he's sleeping with his dog and the, a pod basically replicates him but because he's he's with his dog he's holding his dog it replicates the both of them. It does some kind of weird amalgamation of the two of them. And at one point, this like this completely came out of the blue. I wasn't expecting this kind of thing in a film from this period. This dog just comes running at uh, Cartwright and Sutherland and, and Adams with this human face and the special effects on it, the, the practical effects on it are fantastic to the point that it really it sent shivers down my spine. It looked so abnormal, so freaky, uh, so outlandishly weird um, that it did. I just I got a chill right right down my spine. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous piece of effects work, um, and like I say, it just this, this whole film does an excellent job of creeping me out, building up the tension, creating that sense of paranoia, and you feel for these characters. You're with them. You, you know these four key characters. Um, as they start getting picked off and you don't know who's a, who's kind of been replicated, who's not. You don't want them to get taken over because you, you grow to love them so much.
much you, you really care for them. Like Goldblum's character, uh, when he's at this party and you really get an insight into him as a person because he, he hate This party is for this writer played by Leonard Nimoy, he's this, this psychiatrist, he's written this book and uh, Goldblum's character just, he hates the book and he, he's, he's a bit of a intellectual snob really but it, and despite that because of the way that Goldwyn plays it and he makes this character real you, you like the guy and so when when these four people get together and become this kind of close-knit team um yeah you, you really do grow to love them uh, which makes the final scene in the film all that more scary speaking of Leonard Nimoy in fact uh he's very good in this as well um I I, I think any actor from Star Trek really is gonna have a hard time shaking the character that they played in Star Trek and Spock is so iconic that I think Nimoy really does that and does have that working against him but he, he does excellent here I think you know I really buy him as a completely different character he's still an intellectual he's still someone who is a very rational kind of thinker um, but he, he does enough with it to separate this character from Spock and it does make you realise that he's an actor, he's an accomplished actor, he isn't just that one character, he wasn't just that one character. The ending to the film is a bit of a downer, it must be said, um, but I, I really credit it for having the balls to go the way it does. Don Siegel, who directed the, the 1950s movie, um, he wanted to end his film on a downer as well. He, he really wanted to go out in that fashion, but the studio wouldn't let him. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see that, that they correct that. And Don Siegel does actually make an appearance in this film as well. He has a bit of a cameo, so he, he, he'd given uh, director Kaufman his full blessing here which is which is nice to see. So Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a great science fiction film I think uh, it's also a great horror film you owe, owe yourself to go and check it out if you haven't seen it and you know you owe yourself a repeat viewing if you have. I give it four out of five and I could very well imagine uh, that score going up on repeat viewings if, if it holds up so yeah Invasion of the Body Snatchers four out of five from me but what about you have you seen it and if so what did you think about it and how do you think it rates to Don Siegel's original film or even Abel Ferreira's uh, other version of it Body Snatchers uh, yeah let me know in the comment section down below and until next time cracking